what we're going to look at here is a program that I cannot function without, and it is that called Flow, and it's from Parallel 42. This is an incredible, incredible upgrade to the default menu system and UI inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So historically, we're used to this top bar that appears a mad weird looking line and it's all like, Ugh, get out of me face, right? Uh, with Flow, however, well, it's very, very different. It uses this wheel. Flow is now available on the Xbox as well. So you can imagine if you don't have a keyboard and mouse, well, it's been never very straightforward and easy to be able to manipulate all these menus. But Flow, not an issue because it's actually optimized uh, for a controller because it's on a wheel, right? So what I'm going to go through here, I'm going to explain to you what way I have my flow set up and maybe you'll pick up an idea or two uh, or perhaps you guys can shout and say, Murph, see this? You need this, all right? Now, straight off the bat, if you're wondering how I got me fancy skin, they're called a skin, um, for this, this skin pack for flow, it's the Firefly Air skin, uh, well, it was created by the awesome Cyrus T. And if you want to grab that, ramble over to the twotonemurphy.com website, and that's where you can pick it up. Uh, I'll show you here. So if you go to twotonemurphy.com, ramble over to where it has downloads, you'll see where the Firefly Air Flow skin and links widget resides. You download that, chuck it into your community folder, and you're good to go. All right. So this is what I have on uh, the various wheels that I have for Flow. Right. So I have a couple of different wheels here. Look, see all these? Right. And there's a new mode here. It's called Ghost Mode with Flow. And essentially what Ghost Mode allows you to do is to have features turned on that you're just not going to turn off. Something like the new landing rate they've put in uh, and all that sort of jazz, right? So I'm going to start at the very at the very, very top. It's going to show you what theme is currently loaded because sometimes I might change the theme depending on what I'm doing. And you can customize Flow a little bit to say, hey, you know, I want, uh, it's, uh, I want these buttons active. And there's also buttons that are going to be relative just to the aircraft that you're flying, which is really handy. So let's start. We'll go clockwise. The first one, I have the menu system for FS traffic by Just Flight. I have that module turned off, but if I want to get in and manipulate it, I just need to click in there. I also have a wait and balance. So if I click on the wait and balance, it opens up the legacy or the Microsoft Flight Sim wait and balance page. And I can go in and do all my stuff from that, right? The next one I have is the miscellaneous units of measurement, and this is a new feature with Flow. The recent update allows us now to add in some of the simulator commands and options that previously we couldn't get access to unless we hit, you know, escape, assistance options, units of measure, go back, go back, and all the while your airplane is now paused. People are passing you out or ATC are having a fit, right? So, um... Can you show us how to make your own skins or link to a resource in Discord? Yeah, someone, someone, someone should let us know how to make them uh, for tutorials. So if I want to change the units of measure, check this out. I've created a little button here. And if I click on the button, it brings up the auto search bar. So auto, similar to autopilot, that fella down there, remember from airplane, uh, that's what Flo called their kind of centralized machine. And I can select here. So data multiplier or data for multiplayer or miscellaneous uh, units of measure. Well, it's here. So I can have it on the US system, which is active. I can put it on a metric system or hybrid. And it's literally a click of a button. That's it. Done. Loaded. You saw a little screen. Boop. Yeah, it's done. I want to change it back again. Click on it. And I go back to the US system. So that's that's when I added in. The next one up is the default Microsoft Flight Sim cameras, right? And this is the default camera setup. We can go, you know, showcase mode, external cockpit, all that jazz is there. We, we know these menus because, well, they're the default menus. Next up I have is the weather selector, right? And this is something I use all the time. I go in and I change the weather. Real time, live weather, or put in a preset, whatever it is you want to do. So that's what I have on my wheel. Uh, next, it says click and hold. This is how you edit the, this widget, the wheel. And I'll go into that now in a moment. Next up, I have headphone simulation. Now, this doesn't work with every aircraft in particular. It won't work with the A2A Comanche because it uses its own sound engine through AccuSim 2.0. But if I want to turn on the Microsoft Flight Sim headphone simulation, which can be very handy once you're in the cruise, well, it's a click of a button. You're good to go. Next up then, I, if I want to show the Microsoft Flight Sim VFR map, there she be, yeah, you get the idea. 
And then if I want to open up the GSX menu, or I can, you, you can buy in keys if you want, but that's where the GSX menu goes, right? Does Flow remove the toolbar at the top of the screen? Yes, it does. I'll go through that now in a moment. My second page, and you can have multiple pages, by the way. My second page, this is now a lot more custom options. So if I click on the weather, this is using some of the Flow Pro widgets. So you can see the wind, speed and direction, the temperature and uh, altimeter, and you can actually get a visual representation of what the wind is doing. The wind is blowing in from the, you know, seven o'clock position of my airplane. And you can get this visual reference here to see what's going on. If I move across, I can look at the autopilot. This will open up all the autopilot settings I can use in my aircraft. Autopilot master switch, heading, speed, and so on. If I want to edit the speed, if I want to say, hey, I want to fly at a speed of I don't know, 50 or 60 knots, right? You use your roller ball sitting on top of that tile and just roll forward or roll back. The same can be done for altitude, vertical speed, and heading. Next up, we have trims because we know that trims are a devil when it comes to autopilot reset aileron reset elevator reset rudder or reset all trims yeah so they're just handy for me that's why i like them then we have our autopilot mode is it nav mode or heading mode vertical speed if you want to activate that or altitude uh hold or climb two so that's the autopilot i click back out of the menu by hitting on the folder up and we continue on. Next, then I have the aircraft menu system. If I click in on this fuel level, so by a click of a button, I can actually add fuel into the aircraft. Now, don't use that in the A2A Comanche. I also have the battery level. It's reading zero percent. Don't worry. Again, it's this is it's not applicable to the A2A aircraft. Next up, then we have reset your barometer, turn on all the aircraft lights, and even doors. You can select what doors you want to add in. Now, I've created all of these myself. It just took me time. I said, yeah, I want to be able to open up various doors and aircraft and so on. As we move across, I can toggle a tail hook, which is always handy. I can also toggle a water rudder. Now, a water rudder is not going to be applicable uh, to any kind of uh, any other aircraft that's not amphibious. But there are some settings, uh, in particular when it comes to the Got Friends aircraft, they use the water rudder, uh, or the water rudder um, key bind. To activate other things on your aircraft. Next up, we have the rotor brake if you're flying in a chopper, and then I have a pedo heat button here as well. I can turn that on or off. It's just handiness. Next up, I have navigation. So if I go into nav mode, I have the position, and this is all using Flow's own widgets. So for example, I'm on the ground here with Burr, right? And I can move around, I can zoom out, get an idea of what we're going and who's with me. Cool, that's their version of the map. And it's, it's very good. I can then change my altitude. Click of a button. I can climb a thousand feet or descend a thousand feet just by a click of a button. So if you're into like making movies or tutorials and all that jazz, this is extremely handy. If you're like me and you let the aircraft run out of fuel or carb ice or whatever, and you need to climb to get over the hill, there's a little button. We're laughing, right? Next up then is the sim rate. If you want to change the rate of the simulator, i.e. you're flying from London to New York, and you know you don't have all day to fly it increase the sim rate rather than finding the key binds you can actually do it from within here again that's really really handy moving down here this is called portal and portal is from flow this is what portal does what portal does it creates a portal it will transport you through a portal to anywhere it is you want to go hello there you can select a friend an ikeo code or even coordinates and because your friends is synced with the menu, if I want to roll down here and find what friends are online, uh, there's Matty Losa. He's in the world map. No point moving to him. Uh, if I go to Soaring AJ, well, he's currently flying at 1,084 feet near Kilo Tango Hotel Alpha. I can click on this, hit the little button, and it'll immediately teleport my aircraft to there. I can also, also customize it. What altitude do I want to be at? What speed do I want to be at? And so on and so forth. All right. Uh, John, many thanks for the follow. Welcome in. So that's the portal. Next up, then I have toggle active pause. You probably really don't need that there, but it's a button nonetheless. Reset aircraft orientation. 
So you know the way if you crash upside down like me, we tend to press the Y key, slew mode. Well, this will there here's a button that'll just reset the aircraft orientation, put it back in the straight and narrow. We following so far? Next up then are the cameras. And this isn't like the default Asobo menus. No, no. Flow has its own camera panel, which is available on Essential and Pro. And we can change things. The movement speed, the pan speed. We can have head tracking on or off. We can follow the aircraft. It'll lock onto the aircraft and follow it. And we can also select all of the cockpit cameras. Quick views, instrument views, and our custom views. It'll also show the external views and it'll show the drone and showcase views. Click of a button stuff. Really, really handy. Click of a button, right? After the cameras, uh, we have Stream, and this is part of Flow Pro. So for example, uh, I, I've, I've reset it, but if I want to display the Twitch chat live here on the screen, well, that's how I do it. If I want to turn on the ATC bot, that's how I do it. If I want to change and put in a wind visualizer, and I want to put in accelerator or acceleration visualizer and also my controls visualizer. You'll see them all pop up over my head. And if I now start changing in the sim, see the way I'm moving the control surfaces and you can see stuff moving on the screen. That's giving you an idea of what inputs I'm putting in to the aircraft. That sounds a bit dodge, but that's, that's what you're doing there. And you can just turn them off, click of a button as well. Really handy. That's great for like instructional videos and tutorials. This one here, another new feature, because I can now go into the data options. I can turn multiplayer data on or off. This is so important. The reason being is when you're having an issue on multiplayer in the sim. What? Issues? Multiplayer? Nah. Right? When you have issues with multiplayer, um, yes, you can cycle servers or you can turn stuff on and off, but you have to go back to the main menu. Now, no, you can do it from here. So at a click of a button, I have multiplayer turned off. I can now turn it on. The screen will quick load, instant. I haven't disturbed my flight. And give it a bit of time, aircraft will now start appearing if they're flying in this region with this server. This is huge, Lance, right? Now, if that's not enough, I have a lookup uh, table here. I, I might actually move that stuff around. My lookup table is auto, as in the search bar, uh, top of descent calculator, right? Animation zoom, Wikipedia, the variable monitor, a calculator if I want a calculator, right? Um, and so on and so on. Even a notepad, right? Write a notepad, yeah, we open the notepad. Write to auto, hit return to save. Hello, where's it now? So you can type your stuff in and it's saved to auto. It, it'll just remember what you've wrote. I can also look up METARs. METAR lookup, yeah? Don't know why that's not working. And then you can just go into auto itself. How cool is that, right? Now, what else do we have? Go back over here. This is what I wanted to show you. This is where I can select all the different servers. So I can go automatic, North uh, Europe, West Europe, East US, West US, and then Southeast Asia. Click of a button, I can cycle the server. So I can turn on and off multiplayer and also cycle the servers. That's so, so handy, right? So, so handy, right? Hey, Cyber Tiger, good to see you. Don't forget, lads, we're doing a giveaway for the Sonic Viz add-on called Aircraft Manager. Gibble gave us a showcase a couple of moments ago. And uh, for your chance to win it, it's for the PC only. For your chance to win it, just type in exclamation point ticket uh, and that'll get you up and running, all right? So I'm going to go back to multiplayer and just turn it off for the minute. And you see, just pff, load, done. Sweet. Next up, uh, we have time. And again, this is another flow feature. This is their own um, widget that they've created. And this is infinitely better than the default, let's change the time of day. Because you have this slider and it's never accurate. I want to get it to 1427. It's in there, 28, 25, 28, 25. I want 1427. Check this out. Go into the time management here. I can type it in or I can have absolute way more precision because I can use my rollerball. It's 1427. We're done. If I click on the time, it'll actually put it to live time. It's night time. Or you can click and it'll bring it up to the different transitions. How cool is that? Again, if you're into making all your videos and stuff uh, using Microsoft Flight Sim, you can actually engage the day cycle lock 
You're locking time. We have frozen time, friends. Complete freedom is here. Good to see you. We've frozen time. Not only that, not only that, we can transition the time forward by a minute, by 15 minutes, 6 hours, 12 hours. They're just nice handy little buttons to go for. We can also change the month and the day. The month and the day. And again, it uses your rollerball. There's August, September, August, July. Up or down, you move them to whatever way. If you're in June, click on the, if, and you bring it to May, click on the live, it puts you back to the actual live date and time. Click of a button. How handy is that, right? Moving on. Uh, or that's it. That's that page. So that's those wheels that I have active. Now we go to the next page, and this is where the Firefly Air, because this is custom to the, um, whatchamacallit, the skin, right? The Firefly Air skin. So if I click in on this, well, you see where all our links reside. So if I want to go to my FS Hub dashboard, if I click on this, it automatically launches a browser in the background. If I've got a Navigraph or SimBrief, it'll automatically open up the SimBrief website in the background. How cool is that? Click of a button stuff, right? Click of a button. Some of the other ones we can look at for Firefly Air, uh, we have the leaderboards, that'll link you straight there. Venture Sky, that's where I look up all my weather. By the way, you, you know the way some people use like the windy app or whatever. Venture Sky is my favorite. I find it to be the most accurate when it comes to aviation. That's a real world tip, specifically when, well, not specifically, but it's very, very accurate for Ireland. Very, very accurate. You go on to Venture Sky, I'll show you what it looks like. Click on Venture Sky. It'll open up the gadget here. It's like the windy app and all this, yeah? But if you look at, say, the likes of, say, wind or wind gusts, and you can change how all this looks, do you know what I mean? And the time of day, and it'll give you a forecast. It covers the entire planet, by the way. It's like the windy app. I find this one to be better. Okay? Someone's asking me, how much is Flow? Flow Pro. Flow Pro. Parallel 42. So, Flow comes in a couple of different... Uh, utilities it comes at different prices so you have a free version of flow well let's go in and have a look from the parallel 42 website yeah multi-tool goodbye toolbar it'll do all the jazz and it'll show you what's there flow free gives you the wheel meaning that you can move now the default menu bars that asoba have created and put them into your wheel flow essentials which is available also on xbox 16.95 euro I give you the wheel, better game panels. So now you're getting the custom panels, aviator tools, and custom nameplates. This thing has a nameplate mod. I'll show you now in a moment. And then Flow Pro, which is thirty three ninety five, gives you everything, including a developer mode to allow you to create your own widgets. It allows you to create your own tools within it. Yes, you can also pick it up over on Orbex as well. Parallel 42 uh, have a very good relationship with Orbex. So you can pick it up from either the Parallel 42 store or you can pick it up from the Orbex store. All right. So we'll continue on. Uh, let's have a look. What were we doing? Oh, yeah. These are all the Firefly Air stuff. Even my Twitch channel is there. How cool is that? Now, let's say, for example, let's look at some of the menus and options that we can do. So when we open the wheel, and again, I have that bound to a little button on my mouse. I have a little, I can't show you, my mouse will fall. It's, I have a side button on my mouse for my thumb, and that'll open up the wheel. Wherever I have the mouse, and wherever I press that button, that's where the flow wheel will appear. Dead handy, right? But we're going to the options over here, settings. And we can configure flow for Xbox controller mapping. It's going to show us this is how it works for Xbox. Sweet, okay. What about any tutorials? There's a full tutorial that'll hold your hand from start to finish. What about the interface? We can change the Flow UI scale, make it bigger or smaller, it's up to you. You have an option now with Flow Pro, skip to the world map, directly load into the world map when starting the sim or when you return to the main menu. So when you go back to the main menu, you're met, you're met with all these thumbnails, you know what I mean? Flow has a, a, a feature that if you just want to get back to flying, it just puts you straight to the main map before and after your flight. It's a handy thing to have for some people. So, uh, focus on departure search in the world map. Automatically focus on the airport search field when opening the world map. You can skip ready to fly. You know the animation ready to fly. Or you have to kick, click the little button. I'm ready to fly. You can skip all that. Auto start flow and then disable the default toolbar. Now some, might, some mods might prevent that from actually working. They're working on it. So at the moment, see the way I just move up to the top of the screen, I have this menu bar. Well, if I disable that, 
I can now move to the top of the screen. There is no men there's nothing up there now. How handy is that gets rid of that stupid line as well, right? Deadly. Now, the wheel, the scale of the wheel, reverse page, always centered or keep open. Again, these are just some quality of life things. Toggle the wheel. Access the widget. Toggle wheel can be that's where you put in your own key bind and so on. Yeah. Now we can go to the auto search bar. It's scale. Always centered or keep open. And how do you toggle it? We're just in the options here. Simulation. Fix active pause. This will disable the flight controls and eliminate fuel consumption during active pause. If you hit active pause by default in the Asobo engine, it doesn't necessarily pause it. It just brings the speed right down. The aircraft is still running and you're still burning fuel. This fixes it, right? It fixes it. Can you show us how to move icons in flow? Absolutely. We're going to do that now in a moment. We're going to create our own little profile here now in a sec. Next up are the nameplate mod. Now, I love Flo's nameplates and I also love the one that Fly with Nick did as well. But I'm using this one a little bit more only because it's, it's I, I try and keep as little stuff in me sim as possible. But I highly recommend the Fly with Nick one if you don't have Flo. Custom nameplate styles, show additional data, only show your friends, force uppercase, so their names are displayed uppercase, show aircraft marker, a little dot where it is, the name scale, the data scale, as in aircraft type, altitude, so on. And you can also change the colors, daytime, nighttime. And if you want to have your friends appear under a different color, you can absolutely do that now as well. Say, for example, all your friends who, that you go flying with, or maybe they're part of a team, or maybe they're part of, I don't know, your members or whatever. Well, you can make them stand out by changing the color when they, just, when they appear on your screen. Genius, right? Say, for example, we've seen it with the shadows but when they were with Forder, and we see it with the shadows all the time. They have the little icon in there using Nick's um, uh, nameplate mod. The same idea can work here. Let's say, for example, we're on we're all on a flight and we're doing something like a formation training. Well, if you wanted to, you can color code uh, the nameplates for the other people. Bearing in mind, it's only visible on your screen. So everyone else would have to do the same, right? Uh, Wilfred, many thanks. Many thanks for the raid, dude. Good to see you. So uh, we can color friends differently if we want. All right. Uh, next up then with Flow Pro, well, we can integrate this with Twitch. That's where we get the chat on the screen. And then if you put in exclamation point info, it'll then pull the information from Sim Connect back into Twitch. I don't think it's working now, but it, it does work, right? It'll tell you what I'm in, where I'm in, where I'm at, what I'm doing, and so on and so forth. And you just type in info. And then we have the dev tools, and then we have some more information here that you can click in and get some more uh, information about Flow itself. All right? So that's what that looks like. So we're talking about, well, can we create our own? we can so when we open the wheel we click and hold to edit and we're brought up to this menu system now remember i'm using the firefly air uh, skin so it's going to show things a little bit different a little bit different jason can't show you that right so what we're going to do uh, i've core widgets so i can use the roller ball and see the way up here you have all the different names we can move the wheel to the right or to the left or we can add to the right or the left. We can add in as many pages to this as we wish, right? Uh, don't forget ATC bot says hi. Oh, it does too. Strap, come on yourself. So let's have a look here. Let's let's go in and create something new, right? So here's my static wheel, S1, right? I can call this whatever you want. You can call it Murph's page one, right? Go to the next page, static wheel S2, or let's call it aircraft systems or whatever, right? Static wheel three, and then we can go four dynamic wheel, which is going to be dynamic to that command sheet. It's dynamic for that aircraft. But anyway, static wheel S4. Let's go in here and create a something, shall we? Okay. So what we got to do, we click on the box in here or whatever wheel you want. Yeah. And I'll get rid of this control. You can type in what you're looking for. And this is where you can start adding some things in. These are some of the default ones. You can add in a folder, which means when you click in it, it opens up another menu. We can add portal, weather, time, tutorials, updates, toolbox manager, settings, or a custom script. You can create your own JavaScript and it'll go in there and it'll do something in your sim. Or we can look at some of the community widgets. You can download some of these from flightsim.to. You see the one here from Cyrus. He made the FFA theme and we have all our links that we can appear them in. And it's a, a simple case of drag and drop. Okay, 
that's now active there if I want it. If I don't want it there, that's just opening up my website. If I don't want that there, right, go back into flow, go back here, you devil, go back to click and hold, go to this new page, right, and this one here, well, we want to get rid of that, yeah? We want to get rid of that. So if I click on this, I'm going to delete it. See up here on the right? Yeah, delete that, please. Okay, let's put in something new. So we're going to roll the wheel down. The core widgets, core widgets, right? And if we go further down, you have all different ones that you can do with Flow Pro. Let's look at the core widgets. Autopilot, autopilot master switch, autopilot speed, altitude, whatever you want. That's where they are. And these are core widgets. These are already set up. Camera speed, drone events, so on and so on. These are all the Parallel 42 ones, yeah? Controls, landing gear. Oh, that's handy. Flaps up, flap down. If you want, that's where you grab them. Uh, dev tools, not important. Doors, electrical engines, fuel. Game, game servers, or servers, yeah? Toggle the 3D thermals, if you want. Quit simulator. If you don't want to hit escape and just have a little button, phew, click the button, sim shuts down straight away, yeah? The HUD, landing rate. Controls visualizer. Now, the landing rate... That's Parallel 42's landing rate. I've put that into what's called a ghost menu, meaning I can't access that menu unless I go through the options. All right. What else do we have? Instruments. Tss, tss, tss. Right, not them. Uh, lights, all the different lighting ones. If I want to say, right, turn on my beacon lights or just turn on my strobe lights or my logo lights, the pedestal lights, recog lights, recognition lights. You can have all of these set up, right? It's really, really cool. Uh, Microsoft Lights and Panels. These are the default panels or the panels that are loaded in by your own third party stuff. So like here's the GTN 750 toolbar. Let's drop that in there. OK, now I want to move to the next one. OK, so that we're, we just put one in there. What else can we put in? Radios. Hmm. These are all flows, so we can put in a transponder if you want. OK, there's a transponder. Let's click a new wheel or a new um, tile we could look at the time of day or utilities perhaps oh there's a stopwatch yeah that's going to be handy let's drop in a stopwatch over here see the stopwatch on the top of the screen you guys see that already right and see the way you can move it around you can actually say hey whenever i activate this this is where i want that stopwatch to appear yeah and there's more coming by the way i'm waiting on someone to to make me the oak the steve one can evil has right all right, so we go to something else. Uh, weather, weather, all the weather stuff are there. Then you have sim settings. But let's say, for example, hmm, I want to put something in here myself. What's, what's, a, what's an option that we tend to go into the menu to turn something on or turn it off again? Hmm. Um, I don't know. How about um, someone give us an idea? ATC. Let's type in ATC. ATC, sound ATC text-to-speech settings, or the sound voices. So let's put in the sound ATC text-to-speech. Throw that in there. Okay. So there's ATC. Name tags. Now we have name tags already, but we can show in here accessibility instrument name tooltips, traffic show, traffic nameplates, traffic show, traffic nameplates. So your nameplates are in there, right? Multiplayer, we already have it in there. What about trees? Man, Gibbo, trees. That's Tress Murphy, you blithering idiot. Look at this. We can put in sim settings for the trees. And we can do this live. Okay, let's, let's drop that in there and see what happens. Adjust the quality of the trees. Ugh. Let's see what happens though, right? What else do we put in? AI. AI. Go back, you devil. AI. Let's see. HUD. Lights, GSX, sim settings, graphics, anti-aliasing, anti-aliasing. So it's looking for AI, yeah? Terrain vector, objects, terrain shadows, graphics, graphics, terrain level of detail. So we're looking for um, AI aircraft, isn't it? Here we go. Sound aircraft engines. Okay, we're getting there. Traffic aircraft type. Traffic AI aircraft traffic density. Or the airport vehicle density or the worker density let's turn on the worker density over there and let's put in oh what else do we have show multiplayer in close proximity Time to pull the big uh, good, traffic density for aircraft and so on and so on and so on right uh gazbot thank you very much indeed welcome in 
Many thanks for the raid, dude. Uh, ground worker density or, you know, traffic ground aircraft density. Let's throw all these little menus in here for the moment. All right. And that's AI, right? AI. What else can we put in? Is there anything it doesn't do, right? So I've now put all these in, look, right? And if I could just close the wheel now. Let's just close the wheel. Are we ready? So we're going to say, right, that's all done. Close the wheel. Now we'll open the wheel and let's see what our new options will do. So we've said already, I want the GTN 750. Now I might need, oh, there we go. So the GTN 750, well, it's already turned off. I need my avionics on and that'll power up the GTN 750 um, on screen toolbar, right? Okay, turn it off. Oh, it's the clock. Transponder. Check this out. So I can click transponder to turn it on or turn it off. But if you click on it, I want to squawk, let's say, one, two, uh, three, and four. So let's say you're flying and you're in the cruise and you're sitting back and you don't want to be in your airplane because ATC suddenly say, squawk, one, two, three, four. Boom, shaka, in you go straight away. All right. Next up then, sound ATC text to speech settings. Well, let's click on it. So it's saying, right, Azure, adjust the quality of text to speech. So we can have it on Azure, which is active. We can put it to offline mode or we can turn it off altogether. Right. These are the options inside the sim. What about the graphics for trees? So I currently have a set to high. What happens if I hit low? Will we try it? Let's try low. What happens? Done. Done. It's now changed how the trees are going to be displayed. Okay, but can we put them to like ultra? Click ultra, load, trees are now ultra. I just want to show you this in detail. You guys can see all the trees there in the distance. See the amount of trees there. Seen? Seen. Let's go back into our tree menu. Let us go to low. And look at the amount of trees. Low is active. Load. Do you see the difference? Does that come across fairly clean on this on the stream, lads? Right? Let's turn around full whack again. Ultra. You get the idea? So if you were flying into an area and you suddenly had a drop of, you know, 10 FPS or something, you have little ways to take back control of your sim. Lower the friggin' LOD. Lower the trees, lower the uh, click of a button, just get rid of it. Do you know what I mean? That's what this can do. It's it's frightening, frightening what I can do. So I think I had them on high. That's high. All right, sweet. Let's go back down here to me, where my little plane was. That was a nice little scene we created. Right, we continue on. What else do we have? Well, we have the traffic worker density. I currently have it set to zero. We can increase it plus one. And we can keep increasing the devil. Right? Keep increasing it. Now, there probably won't be any workers walking around here. I don't know. So, set to 40. Has that made any difference? Is it going to put people walking around? Burr? Probably not. I don't think Jepson included any of them. But you get the idea. This will now start loading in people walking around. All the different workers. All that sort of jazz. Right? Ah, Edson! Good to see you, Edson. We're here showing off the power of flow, which is absolutely, it's just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, right? So folks are asking how to configure things and how to get them working. So we're just kind of going through a bit of a tutorial. But lads, if you don't already know, OMG Edson. That is Parallel 42. Himself and Kevin do absolutely mad and wonderful things, right? Uh, and you're very welcome aboard, my guy. Very welcome. So next up was the traffic ground aircraft density. Ooh, we have this turned off. Let's see, can we add in a few? And let's just see, will it now add in a couple of static aircraft? It may or may not. It depends on uh, it depends on this particular airport. So you may not see them, right? Give it a few seconds. Right, we'll go for, say, 40%. Let it load. It depends on the airport. This is probably not a good example to show you, but at least you know now how this works. This is where you can adjust things on the fly without having to hit escape. Right? You're currently riding a cab in Bolivia. Oh, nice, man. Get the finest Bolivian beverage and food you can get. Great to see you, man. Great to see you. Right. What was the last thing we did? Oh, that was it. Oh, yeah, the stopwatch. So see the way the stopwatch is here now. And I can move this around and I can mess around with it and all this, yeah? See the way the little starter switch is on it? Click the little red button. Edson! Here's one for you while you're driving in the back of a taxi. 
Do you ever watch Steve-O One Knievo? Do you know the little dial graphic he has for airspeed and direction that comes up in the bottom right hand corner? Not saying you have time to do it, but if you ever find time, which is unlikely, that you'd be sitting back in your chair saying, oh, I've nothing else to be doing today. Right? Because it'd be very handy and much, much nicer than the weird gauges that we have from Asobo. Or maybe indeed someone from the community will build it and uh, they'll put it up on the likes of flights and .to. Who knows? Who knows? But look, here's my little analog stopwatch. And it works. This would be a great thing now for timing Gibbo. Do you know what I mean? Stop it. We can continue or we can stop, reset and go back to the start again. How cool is that? If you're not happy and you want to make changes, go back into the menu, click and hold it, right? And I'll go down to this new area, S4, and I'm just going to start lifting these out. Right? Just You can just delete them over here on the right-hand side. And with some of the custom... Um, widgets that have been created you can actually get in and edit them by using some of the developer code it'll actually go in and open it so if you see this uh, stopwatch for example i can click on an edit button caution editing an imported script will disable update tracking which will go in for a minute but look at this i can edit how this thing works look right make the screen a little bit bigger i can change the name of the script i can change what icon i want that to show in the wheel Right? Really, really handy. Utility, what it is, give it a name, all that sort of stuff. I can then go into JavaScript. This gives you the entire code of how they've made it. So say, for example, if I knew JavaScript, which I don't, which I don't. I know enough about coding to know I haven't a clue, right? Um, but this is where you can get in. You can edit in Java, in CSS, HTML, uh, Docs. If you click on Doc, it's going to open up the Flow uh, documentation site which is part of parallel 42 and they're going to give you all the information of what you need to do in order to be able to do it right it's brilliant and i see gibber there has just dropped in a linkage to where we can get some of these let's go in and have a quick look we'll get in here now and have a quick look right let's see uh one second now uh let's see uh Right, brilliant, brilliant. I love getting feedback. Oh, that's after making me day. Uh, right, what was it? Oh, yeah, the chat. Hang on, look at this. Uh, shh, try now. So if we go over to uh, Flights and Nutio, this will show you some of the widgets that the community have made. And they might, they're all different. Transition level calculator, right? Um, info bar. So if you want to have an info bar on your actual screen, you see a couple of streamers. We have info bars up at the top telling you what we're doing and how we're doing it. Yeah. But well, I want one of these, but I want to customize the devil because I wanted to make it look like Steve One Knievel's one. You know what I mean? And rather than worrying about putting it on a on a streaming PC, put it over here. Eamon says the stopwatch would be handy for Murph. How long it takes him to get in the air. That's brilliant. I like that. I like that. So I can grab this one. And I can edit this, if I wish, for my own use. I can talk to the creator who designed it and say, hey, you know, uh, you know, Plurs or Wolf, or Wolf, can I get in here and change it a little bit? Because I want to make it custom for myself. Do you guys get the idea? And then you can go to export it, or you can run it to test it, and so on, and so on, and so on. That's what you can do, right? So uh, because I've already edited that, I'm going to remove it and just add back in a default one. So click and hold. Go down to where I had my S4 page, click on the little watch, delete, proceed, and that's it. And whatever pages aren't active, they can be deleted. Then you have dynamic wheel, which is going to be for the Comanche. So say, for example, this Comanche, I need this button to work. It'll do it. If you want to have a ghost wheel, this is the ghost wheel. And this here is the landing rate. I want the landing rate to appear whenever I land. And it puts in a small little notification somewhere on the screen. And these are the options that I have. Now, it's hard to read only because the Firefly Air logo is behind it. So don't worry about that. But you can have the widget active, auto hide, auto hide after 42 seconds. But of course, 42. Uh, and then, you know, minimum uh, landing height, minimum bounce height, reset and keep it auto update, up to date. So whenever I land now, it's a menu system replacement. Indeed, whenever I land now, it's going to show me the landing rate. On screen, it'll tell me how good I'm doing. How amazing is that? If there's other stuff that you know you don't need to turn on or turn off, use the ghost wheel. So for example, if you always want a stopwatch, always there, 
will put it in the ghost menu and every time you turn it, if you activate it, every time you turn it on, when you turn on the sim, it's active and you can't get out of it. So let's put one in. Let's go in and throw one in for the crack, right? So that was, uh, that was like a clock, wasn't it? Where did we find that? It was in, uh, where did, ooh, uh, where was that now? HUD, yes. No. Oh, let's type in clock. Because I'm about to find, I'm lost, right? Clock. No, that's not how you spell clock. Time of day. We're getting close. Set clock. Jesus, lads, I'm after missing it. Oh no, it's called stopwatch. Stop. Watch. Dish. Right? So that's now active. So if every time now I turn on the sim, this stopwatch is going to be on my screen. Right? Pops, please. Thank you very much for the gifted tier one sub to Frankie Poops. Very kind of you. Ghost wheel services, things, uh, bot, etc. You don't need to actually interact with them in sim. Correct. So if I've now put this uh, clock into the stopwatch into the ghost menu, meaning... It's always going to be on. Always. And I can't turn it on or off. It's always going to appear on screen. Now, it'll function the way I want it to, but it's always going to be there. And if I go into my quick menu, ah, oh, where is it? I can't access the ghost menu from in here. Hello there. Go into your options. Now you go to the ghost menu, and this is where you can remove it. And that's it. Exit the editor, and that's it. So that is flow. Isn't it only brilliant?